Welcome back, family. All right. Mangituru M. Zadi. Mangituru Adam. Mangituru Will. <laughs> and you know, today we have our special guest. Oh, yeah. Carlos Mary will be doing an interview with her to kind of get you guys to be inspired to move to the Gambia so you can know that it's not just us talking about it. It's other people that's there, that's on the ground, and they are actually making moves, making changes, and helping the people. Because we always want to show you guys people that's doing something, yes. people that's for the people, so that you can reach out to them, and they'll be able to help you instead of us just giving you, you know, randomness. So hopefully today's <laughs> interview, you love something that we talk about, you get inspired, and even if you don't want to move to Gambia, move to Africa, yes, you sure. feel the need to visit. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. we always have to inspire, 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 inspire. So Will, yes. what is, is the quote of the day? Okay, okay, family. So um, we've been kind of digging into our African proverbs, right, for the last month or two or so. So today uh, we're going to stick with that same format. And today is patience attracts happiness it brings near that which is far oh my okay. goodness that was a, a deep one now let that sizzle in your spirit for patience a brings Just, happiness patience attracts happiness it brings near that which is far right. oh my goodness and i think that's a lesson that we all can take from right from today because you, gotta, you, gotta snap your fingers. you know when you are patient <laughs> when you are when you are patient with life i think that that's the time where you can actually sit back and you start to reflect and then once you reflect you gain that wisdom and that knowledge and you are able to come as one because you figure out your problems you figure out how to help yourself you figure out right. you know what you need to change and exactly. so definitely patience is a virtue it's a dual-edged sword right Right. Okay. And, and, and it applies to everything we do. Everything we do. So now we have our new segment to give you guys a little update about things going on in Gambia. Right. So let's jump into it. Okay. So um, we, we oftentimes talk about technology being up to date, especially uh, on the continent and in certain countries. In particular, today we'll speak about Gambia, right? So in yes. Gambia, in Gambia, um, according to an article that was written today uh, by Suleiman Wan um, on the national news, QSEL launched the first ever 5G network in the subregion. Wow. In today. So if you don't already see the cool 5G, on your phones replacing the the previous 4g you should see it very very shortly in the yeah. very very near future mm. wow so what That's does that mean, that mean your, your phone calls should be faster should be you should drop less phone calls you should you know you should you should have faster data all of the above that's what should happen right yes so we're excited we're excited for gambia for that okay so, and I have a question about that too, because I feel like 5G is very controversial right now. Because when you think about 5G, you also think about cancer and many other things that they are saying. Because I don't know if y'all remember when they had the whole the whole thing where they was putting the 5G towers in Africa, but they was burning them down. It was like video footages of them coming and burning those towers yeah. down. So, do you think this is going to be something good for Gambia, or do you think? it might be something negative. Well, um, you know, uh, Sierra Leone had it first. I think they started it first. Um, and um, they were doing, the, some of the original betas te, uh, towers were test towers. And they wanted to see what the reaction would be and figure out this stuff. And um, they did it in, in, in the US also running beta tests on the towers. And so, uh, for safety reasons, there were some uh, changes and adaptations made to some equipment to uh, reduce that. But um, I'm I'm 
hoping that everything is safe in regard yes, yes. to uh, you know environment, animals, people, everything involved with uh, with just trying to have some new tech and uh, and some better communications. So okay, okay. So I think now we have words of Wolof. Right. Yes. Yeah, so our words of Wolof <clears throat> today. Our word is B. B. It means the. So Anna iPhone B. Where is the iPhone? So Anna iPhone B. You put it at the end of the sentence. You know, some languages they have the 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 end. The, it sounds like it's starting, but it's at the end. But a lot of languages are like that. This is one of them as well. So you put B at the end. And it's where is the iPhone? So remember, the word of today is B, and that means the. Okay. Okay. Anna right. iPhone B. Anna mm -hmm. Hotel B. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys, as we already have said, we have our special guest, Rosemary. Rosemary, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for inviting me on your podcast. I'm really excited to be here. We love to have you on. Thank yes, you. Thank yes, you. thank you for coming on. We Jerry are very Jeff, excited. Jerry Jeff. That's okay. brilliant, yeah. Hey, so, hey, no, we're going to ask you just... Yeah, we got some questions for you, you know, and um, okay. we're really excited <laughs> about this. You know, um, our first question, Oh, go ahead, Will. I think Will have a, has a question for you. He put the church hand hey, up. I, I, I did. You saw that? You saw that, right? You saw that? So, so I, I just really, listen, I, you guys know I'm an I'm a in a moment type person, right? Let, let's let's absorb this moment, right? So what what we're, what is happening, people, if you're listening to us right now, Rosemary is on the continent right now. She's in Gambia. It's, I am. It's, it's, I am. Okay, she stayed up to speak with us. Okay, listen, she's on the continent yeah. right now. This is an amazing, amazing time for us right now. So we're right. so excited for this opportunity to, for her to be talking to us all the way live from the continent tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah, she. Oh, thank you. I'm really excited yes. to be on here because I'm. I just want to say that I've really enjoyed all that well of uh, what you guys are doing, to be honest. I feel so embarrassed because I'm actually here and I need to learn. <laughs> a bit more well off. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to catch up, honestly. But um, that was just amazing. Just the meaning of what you got there. It's absolutely amazing. Awesome. Yes, yes. Thank you. We love to have a leader, you know, an entrepreneur, you know, a thought invoker, somebody that's making real moves and connecting you know, people together yeah. in the Gambia. Yeah. So we thank you, every, all of us. Right. From deeply thank, in our you. Heart. thank you. Thank you. Y'all, you guys are paving the way for us. You know, we yeah. it, it's taken a lot for us at our age to be able to come and visit Gambia. And for it, you guys to be there working and doing what you're doing, it's helping not only inspire us, but it's paving the way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to. That's okay, like so it's such an honor to even say that, you know. I think when, when you know, we're on this journey, like ourselves, you know, you kind of um, try to take it all in. You try to make sure that you're making the right decisions and things like that. So it's so inspiring when people say, Oh my gosh, you've inspired me, or da 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 da. It's just like that. It's just amazing because it's like, you know, there was a lot of people that went before me before I was even come to Gambia, and I felt inspired by it. So, wow. thank you. Awesome, awesome. No, thank you. <laughs> I think that's gonna be the title of this episode. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that title, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I think we all need to get to know Rose Mary. We read, you know, the bio that you sent us, but that little snippet is not enough to know you. Where are you from? Tell us a little bit about Rosemary. What shaped you? 
Okay. Um, gosh, who's raised me? Um, so I'm originally, actually, I was brought up, born and raised um, in the UK, right. um, in London. And but I'm a re- my parents are Nigerian. Okay. And um, so I, you know, um, what shaped me? Gosh, I would say so many things did. Um, I've come from the background of design. Um, I kind of went to school to be a social worker, but I didn't end up finishing um, because I just didn't enjoy it. And I just felt, even at that young age, that um, I need to be doing something that I actually like to do. So I didn't um, pursue that, which wasn't obviously a favorable thing um, with my parents. But um, I went into the world of fashion and design and um, and just loved, loved, just literally came alive when I, when I was in that world. And that kind of led me to the path of where I started my own wedding business. I started an event company in the UK, um, won quite a lot of awards in it. And um, and then started my own design school. I opened up my own design school where I taught people um, how to um, learn about textures, colors, table sculpting, floor arrangements, oh and nice. just loved just loved what I did. And then yeah, and then I went into consultancy. So I think through me doing the wedding industry. And when I started doing my design school and consultancy, I just loved, um, just inspiring. I just felt so, um, I don't know, I just felt so inspired to see um, these young people that would just come in with a a little bit of a glitter in their eye, but don't quite know what they want to do. And then just kind of inspire them and they like you know just gone off and done their own thing and just become amazing in their industry and I just feel like that has been um, a big passion of mine and that's it. so it's no surprise that I've come to Gambia and started um, DCC which brings again is in that same field of inspiring people and just bringing people together and so yeah that's a little bit about me Okay. I loved it. And I want to I want to kind of, you know, let's talk about this. Yeah. So you yeah. started a school to help yeah. people do exactly what you love to do. Now, I yeah. also love like fashion, I love design, and yeah. actually I wanted to come to Gambia and do and like do wedding design and stuff like that. And I've backed off okay. from that idea because it's a lot of other things that Gambia needs right now, I feel like. Yeah. But, you know, would you ever bring that school to Gambia? Yeah, I would love to. I mean, I still have a lot of my mm-hmm. clientele in the UK that I do my consultations with. I would love to um, bring that in, in here in Gambia because I feel like um, I know that they don't have, they don't have massive weddings here it's not a massive market here um they're not like nigerians nigerians love to party and they love to be very loud and big when they do you know so they're very loud when they do it but um they're a bit more conservative here for sure so um so they're not as loud so it's not a massive market but what i would like to do is um i think when you when you go into my world, it's a very creative world, right? So it's not just about design and getting a wedding together. It's about bringing a creative nest together. So, you know, I actually never say to people, I'm a florist, I'm a designer. So it's very different from a florist because a florist is like, I have a picture, can you do that? But where with a designer, you can kind of, you know, design, you can go into a room and literally, you know, just design exactly what you feel would fit this type of sculpture of a room and learning a little bit about what they are, who who the couple are and what they're wearing. And you come up with a whole, 
you know, concept and the whole design. So it's very different than just doing, you know, doing what a bride wants you to do. So what I would love to bring is that creative flair because I do feel that um, they lack in that a little bit here. And um, so if that makes sense. So um, just little things that I've seen. So I feel like my, you know, we could kind of just, I don't know, just unlock this, this creative, you know, just unlock the creative side of them, you know, of, of anyone, you know, but I would love to bring that side of things to here for sure. So Rosemary. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is an opportunity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, maybe um, we can start an annual event uh, and partner and, and see where that goes in regards to fashion and design and creativity. And there's something that. Uh, Listen, I uh, think like when it comes to Gambia, I feel. Um, or anywhere, but, you know, we're, we're specifically talking about Gambia. I feel like, you know, the opportunities here is endless. It's unbelievable, you know. There's so much that needs to be done and so much um, we can learn from the Gambians and they can learn from us, you know. So 100%, I think that is... Um, that door's never shut. It's, it's my first love. It's a it's a serious passion I have. So it's something I would always love to do. But it's like I said, it's not a huge market. So I knew that when I was coming here, it wasn't something that I was like, oh, I'm going to start a wedding, my wedding industry. Um, I just knew there wasn't a market for it at all. So um, I kind of wasn't. Even though it's my it's my first love, it's like something that I love to do. I just knew it wouldn't really fit here at this moment. I'm not saying it can't in the future, but I just didn't feel that it would right now. Okay. Okay. Yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, that's, so that's what like made you choose Gambia? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. Okay, so um, because I'm originally Nigerian, right? So everyone's always like, why did you not go to Nigeria? Um, my husband's yeah. friend has been coming to to Gambia for about 10 years. This is um, So he, oh, wow. him and my husband grew up together. So he's actually been coming to Gambia for a very long time and always talking about it. Um, and he's a builder, so um, he's into construction and things like that. So he's bought so much land, and you know wants to do a lot of. He's doing he's doing quite a lot here. So he's been coming for ten years. He's been talking about it, and um, and him and my husband will talk about. It. But do you know what is the funny thing is that I didn't know anything about Gambia and I couldn't even remember him that was the country he was talking about because it's quite it's one of the smallest countries isn't it in in so it's not something you know being Nigerian I don't think I ever met a Gambian I don't think my mum we I don't I can't remember my mum even talking about Gambia you know if it's, it's always Nigeria or Ghana those are the only two countries you you hear in in my household anyway so I never really knew much about it and um so when I was actually looking when we my husband was looking to make this transition into Africa we were originally looking at Ghana and um and then I saw a video of someone going on and on about Gambia. And then I started watching it and I was like, okay, then what's Gambia? I just started getting an interest in it. And I remember going to my husband and saying, you know, Paul, what do you think about Gambia? This is, you know, I've heard some beautiful stuff about it. And he was like, babe, that's what Patrick's been going on for about 10 years. And I was like, oh, <laughs> is that the country Patrick? I need to call Patrick now. So, you know, and then I got on the phone to Patrick and we were just talking about it because I just became quite obsessed with just learning more about Gambia, but just not knowing that was the country he was going to the last 10 years because it just didn't pop out to me. I just knew he was going somewhere in Africa, but I just had no clue. So, um, so I would say that we, um, so that kind of 
you know, sealed the deal. Um, spoke to Patrick, and obviously he completely, you know, was just telling me a lot because he knew a lot. He's been coming there for ten years, so. Um, and then he was just saying a lot of things, and I know was just like, and me, and my husband was like, you know, just we took about a year to make that decision. Um, we have five children, so it was important that we wow. spoke to our children about it. And I gave them a good year of education and just trying to tell them that, you know, you know, this is, you know, we showed them videos. I just think it's very important to do that. You know, you just can't, it's a completely different culture. So um, we just gave them time to know that this is something that we're going to do. And then, yeah, so it was, yeah, so that, I think that, I think, I think I blame Patrick, but um, <laughs> 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 well, that like, sent it to me on the phone. <laughs> but but yeah, like I think it was a very spiritual thing. Yeah, exactly, and I think it was um, they a hundred percent a spiritual connection to it. I just felt like it was just where we was meant to be, you know, and um, it just felt right, and you know, and I feel like. I didn't feel like no, I'm not. I never wavered on it. It was just like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Gambia. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, and that you know that story that's very similar actually to Adam and I's story because we okay. were going to go to Ghana at first. That's where we originally said when we first decided yeah. together we're going to go to Africa, Ghana was where we were going because it was it was such a big movement at the time uh you know about three years ago mm -hmm. when we when me and him first started talking about it it was such a big yeah. movement in ghana um everybody a was going to ghana and we was like okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the year of return right you know oh, right. Man, so, 2019 right the year right. of return so, one. Oh, yeah. yeah and then i don't remember who was it the bag family that we started watching uh, where we really started seeing more of Gambia yeah, and we yeah. fell yeah. in love with Gambia and we were like, you know, we can actually come here and start something. Whereas versus yeah. Ghana, not that we couldn't start anything, but it yeah. could have been harder, especially with us coming young and the type of income we were going to have and so forth. Yeah. And so forth. G Gambia, I can say, is very, you know, it's easier to transition into there's pros and cons right you know it's, it's a yeah. softer life in some ways right. might be harder in other ways but everything is about mindset in the end of the day but yeah our our, our story of you know choosing yeah go to yours yeah yeah so like yeah we really wanted to go ghana i mean i had a lot of connections in ghana so that's why it was a bit of an easier you know, um, decision. Oh, it was a bit like, yeah, we, you know, so I had I have a lot of friends and my um, family members that are there. So it was just a bit easier, but it just didn't seem like it went, it just didn't feel like it was just the right move. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, the divine nature, you know, God, you know, just yeah. kind of directed yeah. us here. Um, yeah. I'm, and I'm really happy with that decision because I feel like, um, it was definitely, definitely the right decision for us at the time. Right. 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 So do you travel to, to Ghana often, like to visit your friends? No, I've never been to Ghana. I've never yeah. been to Ghana. And um, my, no, we, my, actually my cousin came last year to Ghana. She, she went to Ghana and we're very, very close. Um, we have, um, her children are very similar age to my kids, so and they're very close. They've all grown up together. So she was going to Ghana, and we were like, "Oh my gosh!" She's like, "I'm gonna be in Ghana," and I'm like, "Okay, so we're gonna." Yeah, she said, "I'm gonna come come to Gambia, or you come to Ghana." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." When we looked at the flight, I was like, um, "Yeah, that's not happening." <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a different world. Different world. It was insane. to go to Ghana, there's no direct flight, and I've, you know, that's a whole different right. conversation, but um, <laughs> it's not as easy, you know, it was very, very expensive, and I was just like, okay, oh, yeah. you know, 
But I'm hoping I would love to go one day for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I, I definitely want to go to Ghana too. This we can all go together. <laughs> yeah, <isn't it? laughs> that would be nice. So, so when you when you came yeah, when you to made Gambia, was there any culture shock? Like what was your experience? Man. Yeah, um, okay. So you know, um I'm gonna be okay. So <laughs> Gambia <laughs> Okay, um, you know, I'm Nigerian. Mm -hmm. I always say my household, bringing up, growing up in my household was almost growing up in like Lagos. My mum's very cultured. Um, and I grew up with my auntie, my uncle, very loud, loud home. So I expected them to be similar to that. They were very different, if that makes sense. So yes. um, they, 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 they wasn't um, as loud. They're very quiet people. Um, lovely, 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 um, lovely people. Um, but I guess so. I didn't really um, felt much of it. I didn't really, you know, I don't know. I didn't really feel. I think I was just shocked of just how conservative they were, if I'm honest. Um, I because I've grown up in such loud cultures you know with my uncles and my aunties and, my, and they're very loud people and very culture people and very proud and you know so i just expected you know i'm going to africa i don't know why but i just expected the people to be similar to to that but they're very different very conservative not as loud you know and and things like that so i think that was a little bit of a shock if i'm honest but um yeah and then i think um but I, in terms of like just the culture, just um, just little things that you you know that you may miss from the UK, like light, you know, consistent light and and things like that, um, took time for my kids to get used to, um, especially my sons because they're playing a um, Fortnite and they game with their friends <laughs> in the UK. And they were they were not finding that funny at all when the lights will keep cutting off. But they completely adjust now. If it cuts off, no no one even it's it's like it doesn't even do nothing to us. We're just so <laughs> used to it now. But um <laughs> but um yeah, and I think um, you know, so I, I wouldn't say I I I don't know, maybe if you Maybe if you said it to someone else, someone, they might come up with something different. But I just feel like I didn't really find anything that I felt like, oh, my gosh, I can't, you know, it's such a major shock. Um, they eat very different as well. They they do eat differently. Um, I think that was a little bit of a shock as well because, again, we, we eat, our, our foods are very and we have a lot of dishes and it's very peppery. They eat very differently. So I don't know. I just felt like it was just interesting. It is just so interesting to, um, I think just even me, you know, that I'm 41 years old, for goodness sake, like you'd think I would be a bit, I might have a bit more knowledge on that, but I just didn't. And I just felt like, wow, they're very different. So I learned so much, you know, about, um, just about, you know, just because it's in Africa, you expect everyone to be the same. They're not. They're all very different. So it's, it was a lot of learning for me, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't say anything that has been very difficult. I just think it's, um, yeah, I think Africa, it's how you expect it to be, if that makes sense. Just yes. the rawness of it, the naturalness of it. Um so yeah, I would I would probably say that if that answers the question, I don't know if it does. No, it does. You know your back your background in wedding planning that really goes into your organizational skills, and I know that helped you when you moved. You being more organized and you being more. Is it cutting out? So can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes. Okay. Can you, um, I was just saying that. Um, your okay. background with wedding planning and stuff like that definitely, uh, I'm sure, helped your organizational skills and your preparedness when transitioning in that move. 
Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, um, I think, yeah, I think when you, when you step, when you have that type of mindset, you know, where you're quite, um, you know, creative like that, you see, we will, I will step in and see things very differently from somebody else that may step in and see all the thoughts, if that makes sense. I don't really see it like that. I see it so, yeah, I think I see it very differently and I don't, I don't see so much thoughts like that. I see um, areas that, you know, I just, I don't know, I just see it more in like, oh, that's beautiful or this can, you know, or wow, we can add back. You know, I think it's important that anywhere that you step in anyway, you should try to add value rather than take away and uh, look at it as a negative thing. You want to kind of see what can we do to add value to that, right? So I feel like that's always important. And I think, yeah, in my in like what you said with my um, background, that's kind of one of the things that I've always taken is to um, – add value to things rather than look at it in a oh my god there's so much issues but don't get me wrong there is a lot of a lot of things that will frustrate the life out of you here but you know but <laughs> trust me there is a lot but you will you know it is still it's like you said it's a mindset it's still stepping in and just seeing um the beauty as well as the other side of it as well for sure i think beautifully beautifully said you beautifully know said. basically yes. you guys she <clears throat> had a great a great move we're happy for that and i'm sure she didn't have yeah. a choice because if you move in a family with five kids you got to make it as seamless as possible and so yeah she did that y'all you know take that into account and think for yourself like it's not hard it's not a lot to move from one place to the next you just have to prepare you just got to take your time and you just have have to have that mindset of i want to be here i need to be here yeah how can i help this yeah. place that i'm in and that is what's going to actually drive you or help you stay when it gets hard when it gets rough yeah. yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. So, how do you um, sustain yourself in Gambia? You know, your business ventures, present and future. Yeah, I mean, okay. So, um, sustaining ourselves here has, well, I will say this um, preparation is essential. Um, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> And preparing yourself saves you time and money and, you know, so it's really, really important to prepare yourself. Um, that's something that I have definitely learned in business, you know. Um, you know, you prepare to succeed um, by taking the time to listen, to plan, to think critically, to manage your time wisely.